Whatever type of transport you're using, including elevators, there's a problem with going faster. You've got to be able to stop faster too. Higher speeds mean more braking loads. More loads mean more heat. So how do you provide a braking system that can work without overheating and risking a fire? And what's that got to do with a sports car? Being big and tall like Type A 101 means lots of elevators. In total, 67 elevators are needed to keep the 10,000 people that Type A 101 is designed for on the move. 34 are even double-deckers. But for tourists wanting a flying visit to the sky-high viewing gallery, these regular elevators aren't fast enough. The challenge is whisking a visitor like me directly to the 89th floor, super quick, but super safe. This is the answer. The world's most technologically advanced elevator. Well, obviously this is a model. The real thing's bigger, so you can get in it. Digitally controlled, it has a pressurized aerodynamic capsule with shake reduction and even earthquake sensing. The designers say it also goes really fast. I want to know how fast. This elevator, one of a pair, has been officially certified by the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest elevator in the world. And they've given it to me to play with. So, they reckon it can do the next 84 floors in 37 seconds. Ellie, when you're ready, if you would, thank you. In your own time, go. As soon as we start moving, I'll start the clock. Go. I think we've started moving. I can't, there's no noise. There's a fan. Apparently the whole lift is pressurised like an aircraft to help stop your ears from popping. Talking of aircraft, this actually accelerates vertically more rapidly than a commercial passenger airliner taking off. And my ears are now popping. <sighs> right, we're 20 seconds in, 25. There's no sense that we're actually, we're going faster than the city speed limit. We're breaking the speed limit. If we did this horizontally through the streets, we'd be in trouble. There's no noise. And that's it. And that was under 37 seconds, and this is the top. The high-speed elevator launched me at over 64 kilometers an hour, almost half a kilometer into the sky. It's a long way up and a frighteningly long way down. If the elevator cables give way, it's an 84-floor drop with only the emergency brakes between you and the basement. In extreme events like this, metal brakes overheat and can fail. To halt Type A101's super elevators, the engineers needed a material that performs consistently, even when things get seriously hot. It's an engineering line of thought that owes a lot to the automotive industry. This is a high-performance Porsche Boxster S and my next connection. Porsche was one of the first car companies to experiment with alternatives to metal brake discs. The material that performed consistently at extreme temperatures was ceramic. Their tests report the ceramic disc brakes don't get as hot as metal and can even grip better the hotter they get. I want to check out the difference in performance between metal and ceramic brake discs for myself. So I'm meeting Craig Dawson, a motorsport engineering expert. So Craig, what are you doing? Well, basically, I'm trying to get a benchmark for both the disc temperatures at the moment on the two cars. These two cars are completely identical in every way, apart from the brakes. That's correct. The yellow car has well, a traditional cast iron disc, like every modern day road car. The red car has what is known as a ceramic disc. <laughs> The ceramic compound that makes up these brake discs is usually silicon carbide or silicon nitride. It's baked at extremely high temperatures to form a heat-resistant material. 
Why is heat such an issue in brake discs? Well, with a, a cast iron disc, it can get to the point where it gets too hot. It begins to not work as well. The, the friction that it actually produces goes down. So the pads can't grip as well on the disc and it doesn't work That's as well once absolutely it's too right. much heat. And there's double trouble when metal brakes overheat. Not only do they stop gripping as well, but if they fail to dissipate the heat, they can set fire to what's around them, as this very extreme example from the world of motor racing shows. We have flames! <laughs> Not good for emergency brakes in an out-of-control elevator. Almost the opposite applies with the ceramic brakes. It needs heat to get them to work in the first place, but they can go to a higher temperature as well. So how are we, with just these two cars and that, going to show all of that? Well, basically, you're going to perform a series of repeated stops, which are going to build the brake temperature up. Here I go. Five laps. The first test, drive very fast, then hard on the brakes 20 times over five laps. Reckon I can manage that. The idea is to build up the brake temperature so I can feel if their performance changes as the heat increases. To gauge the temperature, we're using a camera that turns heat into visible light. The reds are hotter than the blue colours. White means it's getting serious. Craig also wants to see how quickly they lose their heat. A lack of heat loss is what can build catastrophic temperatures in metal discs. I can smell brakes. I don't know if that's good scientifically. 627. OK. When I pull in, Craig immediately checks the surface temperature of each brake disc. The readings on the front discs are well over 300 degrees centigrade. They're still functional, but as hot as the inside of a jet engine. 290. Craig will take a further series of readings to check the rate of cooling. Thinking back, the brakes did begin to feel different once they'd got very hot, but still perfectly safe. Now it's time to take the ceramics for a spin. How will they perform? To begin with, everything seemed the same. The ceramics get white hot on the heat camera with my multiple braking. But then I notice a difference. The brakes feel really sharp each time I use them, even as they heat up. Every brake is as good as the first. When I pull in, Craig gets an immediate result. 31. His first temperature reading on the ceramics is lower than the metal. They stayed cooler. And did you notice any difference in the actual braking performance itself? Yeah. They, they clearly weren't being as affected by the heat that was being put into them. And it felt, it felt each time I braked again, fresh. So every time it felt more consistent, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. They do pong a bit. <laughs> so what have we got? What have we learned? Well, basically, the ceramic brakes didn't get as hot as the actual iron brakes. They were dissipating the heat better whilst you were using them out on the track. When you stopped here, the temperature wasn't as high. So they'd already lost some. Yeah, absolutely. And what we've then seen from the temperature results is that they have lost that heat that they had when you stopped more quickly as well. From a driver's point of view, these ceramic brakes also inspire confidence. The harder I work them, the better they feel. In the end, they stay cooler and lose heat quicker, reducing the risk of fire. This concept of using fireproof and heat-resistant ceramics for vehicles took off last century. Rewind to 1981. The first flight of NASA's shuttle is the culmination of a decade of research into heat-resistant materials. The problem is protecting the craft from re-entry temperatures capable of melting the aluminium body. Using a compound based on sand, aerospace engineers Lockheed Martin develop a new silica ceramic insulation. This forms the basis of the shuttle's heat tiles. A ceramic tile can heat to over 648 degrees centigrade on one side and stay cool enough to touch on the other. 
In really extreme situations, the tiles can withstand temperatures of over 1600 degrees centigrade. That's hot enough to melt rock. Heat-resistant ceramics are now well and truly proven, with their origins in rocket science and a track record in performance car brakes. On Type A 101, they are the engineer's choice for brakes to halt a runaway high-speed elevator. This is mission control for Type A 101, where they monitor everything and everyone. One full section just monitors all the elevators, including the state-of-the-art ceramic emergency brakes. Should the cables snap on the high-speed elevator, the emergency brakes will activate. Two silicon nitride ceramic pads will grip a steel safety runner. The pads will withstand almost a thousand degrees centigrade. That's as hot as molten lava. The elevator brakes will halt 22 tons, speeding at 76 and a half kilometers within 40 meters, less than half a football field, thanks to ceramics. And that's what connects a sports car with stopping the fastest elevators in the world. <laughs>